just when I thought that they were going to go back into Nostalgiaville, they did. But it got even better. Hi, my name is Michael S. Garner, and I like to do comic book related uh, TV shows and movie reviews. Actually, just my thoughts on these things and, um, and to start a conversation and everything like that. And today we're talking about WandaVision Episode 5, Season 1. And I don't even know where to go from here. Uh, well, I do because I have some notes here on it, but so much happened in this episode again. After a slow start of Episode 1 and 2, if you watch my previous videos, I just, my opinion on it was. I'd seen this before, I'd seen stuff like this before, uh, most notably like in Pleasantville, the movie, um, and um, I just, I wasn't like impressed or anything like that, I was like, okay, that's fine, can we just get to the point, point? and when they finally got to the point in the previous episode, which is episode four, I was blown away, I didn't expect them to do certain things in that episode, and it kind of continues to this one, they start off with a nostalgia thing, you know, we're back in Wanda's world, but it starts to break down. And obviously this is a spoiler video, so I just want to mention this right now. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. If you have not watched this video, do I mean, if you haven't watched the episode, do not watch this video. Uh, because I'm just going to go right into it. And I'm just going to go right to the end of the thing that everybody was kind of wondering what was going to happen. It hasn't been completely answered, but he appeared. Evan Peters as Quicksilver. At least that's what we think. Um, because... They introduce him as being Wanda's brother and that he was recasted. And I was like, oh, God, don't do that to Aaron Taylor Johnson. <laughs> I loved him as Quicksilver in the um, Age of Ultron uh, Avengers movie. I, I really did. So, like, between um, Evan Peters' version and the X-Men universe um, for Fox and the Evan Peters in the Marvel universe for Disney... Uh, sorry, the Quicksilver and Quicksilver. Um, I was... Uh, I, I don't know why I just like, I like them both. They both have certain things that are good for them. Um, it's just that, um, obviously Evan Peters has had more movies, so we have seen him more and, uh, we've gotten to know his character a little bit more. So they introduce him as like a recast and everything like that. And, um, I didn't even know what to think. I'm like, cause they purposely showed him from behind in his hair and you knew it was him, but you just didn't know which one it was. And it happens to be Evan Peters. Full disclosure, I knew that he was in the season. I had looked that up. I knew that he, uh, at least as an actor, but I just didn't know if he was going to be Quicksilver, Pietro. Okay, I'm not going to really go in chronological order of how this episode broke down and everything, just because there was so much stuff that actually happened. And I've been, I've been making fun of the fact that I can't believe people are talking about one division episodes for like two hours on YouTube. I've seen so many people do videos about uh, WandaVision. And I know it's like a slow news cycle for people who are like, uh, you know, journalists and entertainment reporters and everything like that. But I'm like, really? Really? It's It has some Easter eggs and everything like that, but it's not that deep. This episode? Yeah, you can probably go off for a while. I'm going to try to keep this short, but this is a lot of stuff happened. And right into one of the first things I want to say here. In my previous video, I said that I'm hoping that Monica Rambeau doesn't get her powers because in the comic books, her if she becomes a Photon or Ms. Marvel, whatever you want to call her, she had different names and she has light-based powers. I, I was hoping that she didn't get the powers from Wanda because when Wanda threw her out of uh, Westview and um, she like had her slamming through walls and everything like that, she, she threw her so far away. I kept saying, why isn't she hurt? she would be damaged. She would have some type of injuries and it didn't look like she had any injuries. And I was like, unless Wanda protected her when she threw her out because she was glowing. So um, I was like, okay, unless she protected her, if not, then did Wanda somehow inadvertently give her powers with that blast? Well, explained in this episode, I was kind of right. She basically put a cocoon around her and threw her out. I'm just really hoping that that cocoon doesn't result in powers. <laughs> I do not want Monica Rambeau's powers to come from Wanda. There's a scene where they showed Wanda breaking into Sword and taking Vision's body. And I was like, oh my God, that's so, whoa. She just like, she broke in there and she's like, she got the body and somehow she formed it, something that intricate. But if she can form, you know, a whole, a whole damn village, uh, sorry, a whole damn town, then I guess she can form uh, Vision back to normal. But I just kept thinking like, Sword was dissecting him. Why were they doing that? Well, whatever. I guess we're going to find out in the next episode. 
Things really seem to get scary in this episode, at least as far as my opinion. Like when Agnes uh, basically stopped in the middle of um, them and their little routine and basically asked Wanda if it was okay for her to touch the babies. And it was like, whoa, whoa. And that's the thing that triggered off Vision. Uh, because like he's, he's having questions about where he is and he's starting to break through all this. And the fact that she couldn't control the babies because she wanted them to stop crying. And she tried to use her powers, but it wouldn't work. I'm like... I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe it's because she's creating sentient life. I, I know that there are babies and everything like that, but, but because she's creating sentient life like Vision, the fact that she can't completely control them. But I also thought, just like I said in previous videos, she has to control this entire world. So she's going to have weak spots. And this might be the reason why she's losing control of certain things. It's just too much for her. And... If she does actually do what a lot of people are predicting, if she actually does, like, do a big change in the Marvel Universe, who knows? Her powers are still growing. As evidence of what they said in S.W.O.R.D. and everything like that, she never displayed powers like this before, but her powers are ramped up, which means, hopefully, it's just magic. I love it in the story when people explain magic. Um, that that's the one thing that I've always had a problem with magic, and even like when I write my own stories for my own online comic books, I like I have to have some logic behind the magic. Like, how does it actually work? And I think that they did a great job in that with uh, Doctor Strange. They explained the magic base of the Marvel universe, and in this case, I like the fact that uh, well, Darcy actually brought up the word hex because we haven't heard hex powers in the um, Disney Marvel universe. If you do not know, in the comic books, Wanda, um, her powers are basically a hexing, and that's how she. Uh, it's like a hex magic, and that's basically what Darcy says. But she kind of like uh, she kind of like downgrades it. Well, not downgrades it. She kind of like plays it off as like, no, this is the scientific explanation. This is what I made up for what she's doing. But it was kind of cool to actually have her actually say the word hex in this episode, and uh, for them to actually go up to the clothes that Monica Rambeau was wearing and basically break down the science of the fact that Wanda's not creating this stuff out of thin air. She needs something in order to recreate it. So the clothes that Monica was wearing, they're basically the same clothes that she went in with. So when she took the bullet and she shot it, we find out the fact that the clothes are made out of Kevlar. Um, so they weren't damaged and everything like that. So that proved the fact that Wanda has to take something that's already there, recreate it, change it, not just poof, out of nowhere. Other than Evan Peters showing up at the end as Pietro, Quicksilver, whatever you want to call him. I know the age of Ultron, they never said Quicksilver, but, you know, because there was certain legal reasons. If you don't know the reasons, look it up online. Between Fox and Disney and all, all the rights and everything like that. We don't know completely exactly how the rights work, but we know that they weren't able to say Quicksilver in Age of Ultron, so they just called him Pietro. One of my favorite scenes of this episode was when Wanda came out of Westview. And they had all the uh, sword agents and everything like that. Um, I had her down with like uh, machine guns and everything like that and all the weaponry. And uh, she just came out with the drone that they had sent in because she was pissed. It's like, don't send drones into my place. Don't bother me. She just wants to be left alone. She just wants to be happy. But the problem is, is that she's controlling people. She's changing their minds. And we see the damage that has been done well, like when Vision finds out one of his co-workers. And um, he goes into his brain and releases him from it from what's holding him from Wanda. And I don't know exactly how he was able to do that. I think that maybe Wanda, like I said, giving sentience to like these people and everything like that, she's giving certain people more power. So Vision's powers are coming back even stronger. But um, but the fact that when she just walked out, I was like, whoa. And I saw in the preview, they did a preview for this episode and you did see Wanda, what, they didn't show her completely walk out. But you could see the silhouette of her because you know what her costume looks like and everything like that. So to see her come out and she was just so powerful, she took that drone and just threw it. I was like, whoa, now we're getting scary here. Don't mess with Wanda. Speaking of which, I did notice something else. I don't know if Elizabeth Olsen is doing it on purpose, but it looks like her Russian accent is coming out more now. Uh, there was a complaint, like I believe it was an Endgame and everything like that, that, not Endgame, uh, Infinity War. And then Endgame afterwards, that her accent went away. It's like, but, but my natural thing was like, well, from Age of Ultron to like Civil War and everything like that, there was a great deal of time. <laughs> so, um, so, so if she was in America for a while and everything like that, sometimes accents go away and everything because you're just around different people and like you start to pick up on other things. So, um, I never took that as being anything, but it's kind of weird that when she came out with the drone and everything like that, I could distinctly hear an accent coming back. Speaking of which, this won't even be the second biggest surprise, but one of the surprises for me, too, was how far they went with Vision going against Wanda. 
Like they were about to fight. And I saw the preview before, but I'm like, they were really about to fight because he's really angry and he knows, he knows that this is all wrong. And the fact that she doesn't really seem to realize that she's hurting people by restraining them in this world. It's basically capturing them against their will. Another one of my favorite unexpected moments about this episode was when um, Jimmy Woo, Monica Rambeau, and Darcy were talking about uh, basically what had happened in Endgame and everything and the battle at the end and how Wanda was the only one who was basically went toe-to-toe completely with Thanos and she could have defeated him if it wasn't for the uh, spaceship uh, shooting down missiles and everything like that on everybody. Um, and then I believe it was Darcy, I'm not sure which one you mentioned it, as well as, oh, well, Captain Marvel did that. She came close too. And to see Monica Ram- Rambeau's reaction was just, it told so much. We did not know how she felt about um, Captain Marvel, because she loved her when she was little. She looked up to her. She actually, um, if you remember in a um, Captain Marvel movie, where she actually took the um, the device that changed the colors of her costume, she actually picked the cos- colors of the costume for uh, Captain Marvel and everything like that. So you know they're, they're very close and everything like that. But things have obviously changed because she seemed aggravated, almost angry, the fact that they brought up Captain Marvel. And I can't wait to see where that's going to go now. And basically, I don't know. Those are all my thoughts on this episode. And now I'm just really curious about where it's going to go, especially with Pietro, especially um, how... Uh, is Aaron Taylor Johnson going to come in too? Are we going to have two versions of him? I hope he does come in. I hope they did get him to come in because I don't want them to forget him. And I don't think anybody else, I don't think the audience will forget him either for Major Voltron because he was a good Quicksilver uh, for the time that he was here. Um, and it was wrong for them to kill him. I'm sorry, Josh Whedon, who directed that. It was wrong for them to kill him. I think that they never should have did that. Um, but um, but yeah, can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Um, love this episode um, just as much as the episode four. Um, what did you guys think? Uh, leave your comments below. Is there things that I, there's a lot of things I know that I missed on this. Um, I just couldn't like, I'm not going to jot them all down. I'm not going to go for a 25 minute video here. Um, but those are just my thoughts and some of the things I want to point out. That surprised me, made me happy, and just made me more invested in the series. Um, so, yeah, what do you guys think? Uh, let me know below. Uh, share the video or uh, make any comments. Please appreciate it. And uh, until next time, my name is Michael S. Garner. I do comic book-related TV shows and movie reviews. And uh, that was WandaVision. And if you do want to check out my um, online comic book, I draw, write and draw and create an online comic book called Visions of the New. <laughs> One division, vision of the new, but uh, visions of the new, which was a while ago. I created this a while ago. Uh, visions of the new, we see at magicloud.com. You can get a printed version there. You can do the previous or whatever, get a digital download or read it online completely. And until next time, hope you guys have a great day.